There it is. Oh, oh, it's a standing liberty. It's a standing liberty quarter. Yes, yes. I was just talking about that, didn't I? Gosh. She had to cover like one of them last night. Yeah. Wow. Hey guys, Preacher Digger here, and uh, this video is going to be just a little bit different than uh, my normal videos. I'm going to kind of take you behind the scenes to show you kind of how I do some research and uh, how I kind of get some permissions and locations and things like that. And uh, on my last couple of videos, the one I did with Nugget Noggin and the one after that, we went to this uh, ghost town. Actually, it's not really a ghost town. It's, it's, it's near a ghost town. It's part of the same property. But the ghost town is probably about another quarter mile away, and we've hunted that, really not found a lot of things. But when I was there talking with the landowner, she was telling me that when she purchased this property back in the 80s, that there was a colored lady, an African-American, that would come to her, and she was 90 years old back in the mid-80s. And she can tell, she told, told her that she remembers her dad and uh, or her grandfather, I can't remember which one it is, maybe it was a grandfather, that used to be part of a juke joint. Now, I will put up on the screen what a juke joint is and what it, what, what it was for. After the emancipation of slaves, uh, you know, during the late 1800s, and this is where we're at is probably around 1890s down to about 1930, and that time period is where we were at. And a juke joint is where the blacks would gather up, and they would they would sing, they would dance, they would gamble, they would do it amongst other things. It was just kind of a joint where uh, they uh, could get away because they weren't allowed to go into any other spots where the whites were, or anything like that. And so it was way out in the country, usually at a crossroad. And this uh, juke joint she was telling me about, uh, she remembers that when she uh, bought the land. Uh, she was uh, she she uh, had a dead horse and she went down there to, to put the dead horse in this group of trees and uh, let the wildlife take care of it all and uh, she found a well and then uh, uh, she, then she was told that that lady you know she telling her that that was where the juke joint was that uh, this is where all the, the the blacks would gather up during the early 1900s and they would gamble and they would do all types of stuff at this little joint drinking because if it was in the 20s, it was a lot of prohibition. A lot of the coins that we have found were from 1892 to the majority of them were 1930. In between that date range, there was Standing Liberty Quarters and Barber Dimes. And we did find a couple of Mercs and one Rosie. But I even found a, 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 a Civil War cuff button. Well, actually, it was, a, I think, a jacket button. It wasn't like a big jacket button, but a smaller one. That was the 1875 to 1902 before they switched over to the modern day seal, uh, great seal buttons, uh, general service buttons. And so there's stuff there that's dated back and found a lot of World War I stuff. And uh, when we found nickels, they were buffalo nickels. Didn't find any V nickels or Indian heads. It's weird. Uh, most of all the wheat pennies we found on top of the ground. Uh, we don't know if they had tilled through the years and brought stuff up and the rain kind of washed it off. I, I don't know. And the heavier coins settled down a couple of inches. But we found tons and tons of silver. With Nugget Noggin, he found six. I found ten that day, sixteen. I went back the following week with another friend of mine, and he found three, another barber half. And uh, I found, uh, I think, six more or five more. We found eight more. So 23 total coins, silver coins, plus nickels and other stuff that, that's there. But a lot of stuff is out there, and, uh, and there's probably still more out there. But here's the good news, and this is why I'm making this video. Um... She was telling me of a secondary location on her property. And where uh, she is saying the juke joint is, is, is not, well, she was saying that that's where the slaves, after they were free, they lived in this little house. But when I go back into aerial photography and stuff and look, it's not in the same place. It's in a different location. And, uh, and so I want to show you how I find these locations, okay? And then, you know, as far as getting permission, I just drove up and knocked on the door and uh, just kind of started talking to her and, and uh, got the permission on that part. But uh, I wanted to show you, and so I'm going to take you over here now to my computer screen. And you see, I just brought up here Historic Aerials uh, online. You, all you have to do is type in www.historicaerials.com and it comes up. I'm trying to... to uh, conceal my location because I don't want anybody to know where it's at but uh, this is a, a county road that we're, we're following right here and in this group of trees right here was where the juke joint was 
And uh, how do I know that? Because if I look over here and I go down here to 1958 and click on 1958, it comes up and you see the juke joint right there. We go to 1965 and the juke joint is still there. So four vaulted uh, uh, roof line. And if you look right here, do you see the well? Where my hand is on the, on the screen, you see the well. And uh, that's where Nugget Noggin found uh, his half dollar. And that's where I found a barber dime on this side. And he found a barber quarter on this side, which we think it was like a coin spill. And uh, let me go back to the 58. And you can still see the well right there. And so we this was the juke joint right here. And... Um, and how we found this was that there were still remnants of this prop, this this here on the land because the well gave it away. So we knew where the house was because there's still dandelions and things like that that are planted there. But you can go over here and you can also like hit a measurement right here and you can put a dot right here and a dot right there and it tells me that it's going to be 119 feet off of the, the ground. I mean the off of the main road, and that is true. That is. Uh, uh, exactly where it is. There's now a fence through here. I'll go up to the modern day and you see the modern day right here. This line right here is a fence line. We have not hunted up in the trees in here yet. We have not done that. We we hunted on this fence line from about right, right in here up through this little spot right here. We found a lot of coins and then up in here where the house sat, we found coins. That was when me and Nugget Noggin uh, were there hunting. And then the following week, uh, if we go back to this 58, you can see how this road will go through here to the side of the house and in between the well. And so it goes out here in the field. And so when I took my other friend back, that would be in about right in here. And so we started finding all of our coins uh, from this tree right here down to that tree down to this area right in here. We found eight coins in there. Me and Nugget found uh, 16 coins up in here. Now, it definitely had to be a gambling joint, a, a gambling place where there was lots of money being thrown down and lots of silver. No, no Not a lot of Indians or V-nickels or nothing like that. If we, the nickels we found were buffalo nickels. And all the coins were basically 1900 and 1927 and give and take a few years back to, to 1892, a lot of 1899, 1898s, and, and go on back up to about uh, 1937 and 1945. But this place was tore down and so uh, this is the juke joint. This is how I found this juke joint, by talking to the landowner. She was telling me the story that this 90-year-old colored lady told her. And when she buried the horse, she went down there, and she, the only thing that was left was the well. And that's where she told me it was. And so uh, we went down there, and me and Nugget Noggin and killed it, and me and my friend Jason killed it. And uh, by the time you go up to 1995, uh, you can't even, it, it, again, it's just going to be trees right here. You can't even see it. But we found my Civil War button was found right out here. Uh, we found uh, all types of stuff through here. So definitely what our theory is that people would pull in here and they would park over in here because that's where we found some coins. Uh, and then they would park back over in here. And that's where we found a lot of coins and then, down, and then through here. And we found coins there. But this video is not about that juke joint. This video is about the other juke joint that she was telling me about. And so if we would just go back down the road, I want to show you all this. And this is what I'm researching right now and what I want to show you because when I show you this, we are going to go out and we're going to take my drone up and we're going to get some measurements off here. And we're going to take my drone up and we're going to fly the drone over to what these measurements are. And then we're going to find the exact location. You see this spot right here? That's the juke joint. She was telling me that it was over here. Now, when I go to 2016, you see this, this driveway. <coughs> excuse me. This driveway is right here. And this cut through. And so when I go to 1958, that driveway is, at least the cut through is right there. So if, I'm, if that's still a permanent spot, I can mark off of that. So let's go and put a mark right there where I'll take my drone up into the air and we'll go out there and I'll, I'll record all of that. And then let's just go straight down the road to right across from the secondary juke joint. That is going to be 379 feet, 380 feet. So I'm going to take my drone up right here. 
in just a little bit, we're going to go out there and take it up and we're going to go, we're going to fly off of the drone GPS 400 or 379 feet. And then I'm going to measure off my drone over to here. And that's going to be a, give me a triangulation. And that now is going to be, let's just go ahead, let's cancel this and let's just uh, measure right here. So that's going to be 128 feet, 128 feet off of the road, which is about the same distance that we said was this other juke joint, wasn't it? About 130 feet. And so I'm trying to get these. Let's cancel that. Now let's go here. Let's put a measurement right on this juke joint and then right down to this juke joint. So that's 1,729 feet. So now I have my numbers, okay? I have my numbers. And so I'm gonna take my drone. I'm gonna go back on this location too. And uh, I'm gonna take my drone and I'm gonna fly it down 128 feet, 130 feet off of the road down to this spot. And then I will be able to I'll be able to know exactly, let's just zero out of that, and that gives me my, my spot right there. And so that, let me fit, cancel this off, and that is exactly, that's the, that's the 58 picture, here's the 1965 picture, you can see a little bit better, better. there's also a house over here too. And, uh, and so right there, that's where I'm going to be going. So. Um, don't know if it's going to be a good location like the first juke joint, if it's going to be loaded with silver or whatever, but I do know that where she told me that she thought the location is, is not where this house is according to the map. So I'm going to take the drone out. Let's go out there and do it. Let's take it up in the air. Let's mark off this spot. Let's land the drone right on the top of that. Then we'll go out there. I'm going to wait till February. I'm, this is, video is going to come out February when my friend Bayou Diggs comes up, and I'm going to give him this spot because he takes me down to the South Louisiana plantations. And I'm going to let him come up here, and I'm going to bring him on this one, and hopefully we're going to hit another mother load like we did with Nugget Noggin and with Jason. And so I just wanted to show you how I do my research, get permission. The lady that owns this land lives nearby this, this place. And, uh, and so I got the backstory, went to historic aerials, marked it off. And, uh, and so I'm going to do an overlay on this as well. And so uh, we can uh, do that. And uh, that way we can get a, even a better shot. So, all right. Uh, I went to Google Earth and uh, brought up the current image. And uh, let's do a little measurement right here. Because on well, Google Earth now we can see a current image of the land. Uh, this looks like it's going to be taken back in the summer probably let's uh go hit our measurement uh we know that it was right here in the corner and um so let's just approximately do it right there we said it was going to be 479 feet uh to right there let's just stop right there then we said it was going to be 130 feet off of the road so approximately 130 feet so let's just go out here to about uh about four five ninety one somewhere right in there we'll run this back and triangulate that and so right there is kind of where we're looking at uh in this area right there i know you probably can't see my mouse on online i'm not sure why it's not recording but but anyway, I'm going to take my drone out. I'm going to land it right there. We're going to take the detector. We're going out there and start listening for signs of life and looking for glass and listening for iron. And uh, hopefully find at least one silver coin. Then just mark the spot. Wait till February where I'm going to bring a friend up and go detect that area with him and uh, see what we can get. So let's go out there and let's fly the drone and let's get this spot marked off. All right, we're out here on location. I just got the drone set up, got all the cameras set up. And we're going to take this thing up about 30 feet, fly out 479 feet. We're going to turn 90 degrees and go 130 feet and kind of get an idea of there. We'll go up and look at the ground, and that's going to be where the second juke joint is. And hopefully that's where we're going to get some good coins. So let's take the drone up. Let's see what we got. All right. Let's go up about 30 feet. Let's... Uh, yeah, we can see the road pretty good there. All right, let's just shoot. All 
Yeah, we're moving about. I got it on slow right now because I want to control it with not a lot of jerking on the camera. I can go about 30 miles an hour with this thing, but we're going to make smooth transitions and turns. Plus, I got a headwind on me right now that's pretty, pretty good. You can't tell in the camera, but it is here on me. All right, let's parallel with the road. All right, 300 feet out now. We're going to go to 480 feet. And um, wind is pushing me over. But that's okay. We'll just compensate just a little bit. All right, there's going to be about our mark right there. And uh, so we're going to, we're about halfway out. So we need to go about 100 feet out in this area. So we're, we need to go about right there we need to go about uh, to about 580 feet so somewhere probably right there you're probably looking at that spot right there that green patch is most likely going to be where the, let's just go up and let's get a, a greater aerial view of it. We don't want to look that way, yep. Maybe we got it here. Kind of looks like a green patch, but give or take a little bit. That's going up to my regulation height that I can fly this drone. If I don't get flown out of the sky, the wind is blowing pretty hard. That does kind of look like a spot where a house may have set. kind of in the right angle. When we look at the old maps, we can see that, that house is kind of just thrown at the at an angle. And um, so if we fly backwards here, we see a trail. Let's just go back until we see the road. And let's just kind of square up and parallel over the road. All right, we're over the road right there. And so at 360 feet, 450 feet here, let's go to 580 feet again. Let's just kind of get another measurement. We want to parallel there. And just kind of see. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. I think somewhere right there. You're looking right in the middle of the screen. Right there. I think it's going to be the house site. Somewhere there in the middle of the screen. To, I think also, right in that low spot. Right in there. Well, that's what we're looking for, that wet low spot to the upper side of the, uh, let me get in the camera here, where you can uh, see that more green spot. So uh, I think that's where it's going to be. So uh, let's, uh, let's bring this drone on home. Let me switch over to fast now. And then you can see me right there in the middle of the screen. And uh, I think I got my spot. So I think we're going to... Uh, we got our spot. We'll just hold off now until uh, Bayou Digs and Army Man can uh, find a weekend to come over and uh, dig with me. And and we'll go out there and we'll see if we can find anything. I hope we do. Uh, that'd be really good if we do. And uh, I think right now, once I get the drone landed, I can hear, hear her coming in. I see her. 
I'm going to go up to the other uh, juke joint number one, and I'm going to kind of tinker around there this afternoon and see if we can find anything else. Uh, I know there's more out there. We just got to get out there to find it. But I hope you're enjoying this video. I'm kind of showing you how I research on uh, online maps and historical maps and then getting permission from the landowner and then uh, put, piecing this together with aerial photography with my drone. And uh, I think the drone is in here now. So there we go. I'll see you out in the field.